If you're looking for suggestions for a day out in the borderlands between Scotland and England, this is the video for you. In fact, if you're interested in days out in Scotland connected to the people, events and places in Scottish history in general, then why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? I'm Bruce Fumi. Uh, I'm from Scotland History Tours. Uh, if you've just watched my video about David I of Scotland, then thanks for clicking through to this one. If you haven't, then I'll put a link up in towards the end so you can go and have a look at a pot of history of one of Scotland's greatest medieval monarchs. Either way, let's make a plan for a historic day out in Scotland. Here's the plan. King David I of Scotland was a great patron of the church, but he was also a warrior king and he subdued the north of England. So I'm going to suggest a day out to two of the border abbeys that he founded and one of the Northumbrian castles he attacked and finally subdued. Add in a bite of lunch and a coastal beauty spot that will take your breath away and you've got a fantastic day out. All right, so from Edinburgh, we're going to take the, the road down what some people call the Viking coast, down to Northumbria. We're going to stop off at a lovely little coastal village called St Abbs and we're going to walk along the cliffs and then we're going to visit Bamborough Castle which would have been the heart of David's Northumbrian power base. And after that we're going to head west to Kelso Abbey, then Melrose Abbey. Now, you could do it the other way around. Uh, in fact, there is an argument for saying that if you did it the other way around, leaving the cliff walk at St Abs to the end, that would be sensible because cliffs don't have a closing time. The truth is that it's probably the weather that's going to determine what route you take and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, if you follow the map that I'm going to give you, you'll come to a quaint little town called Coldingham. And as you come into Coldingham, turn left down to St Abs Head Nature Reserve. It's a Scottish National Trust site and there's a car park and just below the car park there's a little kind of museum type information area, maybe museums to highfalutin a term for it. Uh, there's a wee cafe, there's a wee grass area with benches outside and stuff like that. There's information boards showing you various uh, routes to walk along the cliffs in different lengths and it'll tell you how long each walk will take and that kind of thing. Uh, choose a walk, follow the route along the cliffs, and you get a beautiful view back to St Abs. It's breathtaking, and no picture can quite give you uh, the impression. After that, uh, you can wander down to the village itself and wander around this quaint little harbour. There's a wee cafe, you can sit outside. It's absolutely lovely. When you've had enough of idyllic coastal paths and harbour villages, then continue, follow the map, down to Bamborough Castle. Now there's a car park at Bamborough Castle, you've got to pay for it. There's a short walk from the car park to the castle, it's not onerous, you've been on a cliff walk already. Uh, now, it's a long time since this was the domain of David I and it's been proper anglicised, don't worry about it, it's that, those pesky English. Uh, their focus will be on the Saxon and Northumbrian heritage of the castle. Uh, there's an impressive great hall. Oh, and for contrast, an interesting little aviation museum there as well. The, the thing is, there's lots to do. It's interesting, right? And it's a proper dramatic coastal castle. Now, there's a tea room in the castle if you want to grab a, a light lunch, or uh, outside the castle in the wee village, uh, you could go into the copper kettle tea rooms or some pub grub in the Lord Crew Hotel in the village. From outside both of these, you can see the castle, you can look back to the castle, and it's also uh, just a stone's throw from the Grace Darling Monument. Once you've done that, you've had a bite to eat, uh, head west to Melrose Abbey. Now, you'll pass Kelso Abbey along the way. Both abbeys were founded by King David I. Uh, Kelso Abbey, it's not as impressive as Melrose, but given that you pass that way, you might as well have a look. When you get to Melrose, uh, Melrose Abbey is right next to a public car park. Uh, it was established by David I and run by Cistercian monks. Uh, not the car park, <laughs> the abbey. Right? And Robert the Bruce's heart was buried there. Again, not the car park, the abbey. Right? Uh, as well as the abbey, 
Uh, there's a wee museum, okay, don't just go into the abbey and forget, you go through a wee gate, cross the road, there's a little uh, museum, don't miss that. Um, they've got a really good audio guide that'll take you around the abbey's key points of interest. And uh, there's a climb up on the roof, uh, it's, it's worth a visit. Um, now, if you're doing a trip in the anti-clockwise direction that we talked about, uh, what you could do is do Melrose Abbey, head to uh, Kelso, have a wee look at Kelso Abbey, and then at Fleur's Castle, without going around the castle, you can pop into, they've got a, a little tea room next to the gardens, it's, it's, it's really nice. Um, there's also, at Melrose, at the other side of the car park from Melrose Abbey, there's a tea room called the Greenhouse Cafe. Um, also, Burt's Hotel in Melrose is worth a lunch stop if you're in Melrose at that type of day. Anyway, I'll leave information, links, Google Maps, all that stuff uh, in the information bit below, uh, including a link to the Scotland History Tours website. Uh, because if you're at all in doubt, why not hire a tour guide? I mean, dog is going to be la my life. Cheerio and wrestling.